Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Rochelle Lynn Smith and I'm from Stamping Flair. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Melbourne and I share my paper crafting inspiration with you. Um, today I have got a fun poll card to share with you. It is a, a pop-up card. Uh, my inspiration I got from a uh, Sushri Patel, another, a YouTuber who shares lots of fun balls, and um, I adapted it to um, my measurements and uh, our products. I hope you enjoy this presentation and the demonstration that I have for you. I will first share the fold and then I will share how I um, embellish my card and newspaper to um, uh, zhuzh it up a bit. And, um, if you like any of these products, you can purchase them in my online store and I will have the links for you below. And um, you can purchase this anywhere in Australia or you can contact me and I can order them for you. So th these products are in our new um, Stamping Up catalog, what I'm using today. Um, it's an uh, annual catalog that just released on the 1st of May. We also got a range of products in our online exclusive store. So um, take a look um, in our online store for our full range. And if you would like a catalog mailed out anywhere in Australia too, you can get in touch with me. So I will go through some measurements and then I will show you the fold. And uh, hopefully you have um, can craft along with me and um, please, uh, whatever time you're watching this, please ask any questions you have or you can get in touch with me directly uh, via email or phone. So uh, let me just get our camera on here. So the first one I've got is a card base. And the card base is, called, this is all in um, metric measurements. Um, and I'll give you some tips so you can adapt it to um, what you need uh, if you want to switch it to Imperial. So uh, it's 12 centimeters by 24, and we will score this, score this in half to form a square card. Back. I've got two pieces of uh, cardstock. One is six centimeters, 13 centimeters, and one is six centimeters by 12. So they are both the same width so that's something if you are making it larger the card or changing it up well, for your imperial measurements just remember that they have to be the same width that so the first thing i will do i will bring in my uh a paper trimmer i'm going to use the scoring blade on my paper so I, with the stamping up um uh paper trimmer you will have a darker blade or the darker gray or the black that's your thing blade and your light one is your scoring blade so i'm going to score this at um, uh, 12 centimeters and that's going to form that's my card base and that's done there so i will get my bone folder and burnish that and we don't need that as a moment we believe that inside. the next thing i'm going to get is my six by twelve and we're going to score this in half at the six centimeter mark on the long side so you can see the measurements up here or if you prefer they're down as well And again, I'm going to finish that and I will set that aside. So I did have, I, I will show you the measurements like at the end. So if you want to get a screen uh, shut up in something, you can and make it easy for you. The next thing we will take is our piece of 6 by 13 cardstock. Oops, and I lost my blade there. And I 
that popped out. Here it is. What popped out? I was, and they're easy enough to get back in. Right. So we need to score this bit on the long side at one centimetre. Two centimeters, so we'll do the one centimeter. I'll tell you what, I, this is how I did it. I find this side easier to work with. So I did one centimeter for these little little um, four lines. So one centimeter, two centimeters, and 3.5. I'm going to flip it and do the same thing. One centimetre, two centimetre, and 3.5. Then we need one more, and this is exactly half, so it's 6.5. And so I'll take it up to the 6.5 there, and score that in. Right, so, so far we've got that. Now we're going to score it at the three centimeter mark, which is exactly half on this side. And score it there. So up till now, I will show you. So if I fold it, then you can see sometimes the score lines are a little bit hard to see. Okay. Just burnish them really well using a board holder, and I will be going both ways. I will be flipping it back once I have one couple more folds to do. The next thing we need to do is take this and score it from this to this so we're going crisscross so basically you're going to have those two lines so the easiest way to do that is place your mark there and place that end there and we're going to score that across and you'll do the same thing on the other side I may have been a touch out and I can adjust that. Let's just be exact. Let's see how how accurate. A bit off, hey. That's okay. Yeah. Just adjust a little bit. And as I fold, I can adjust it. So we're gonna go that way and this way. That one, right? So. That's what you are getting. I'll set aside the camera for now. So let's have a look. That's our score lines. Excuse me, I was sneezing. Um, now, so I'll burnish this again. Well, I'm going to go back and uh, it'll. It'll make sense later when we're assembling, but you, it's for me, I felt it gave me a bit of a pop up as I just, just gave it a bit of a gentle fold the other way as well. It eases it. And this one and that one, we got that, and this way. Okay, now we are going to cut, cut from there to there. If you wanted to, you can draw a line, but I didn't. I uh, so you're going from that mark to that mark, so exactly in half, and we're gonna cut that off. The 
same angle on this side. We don't need that anymore. Let me straighten that up. <laughs> Sorry. So you can see how that looks. All right. So now, so far, that's what we have. Now we're keeping it like this. If you're holding it like this, it's going to fall. Just bring those two sides in. It's going to naturally fold like that. And you will get something like that. If you feel that it's not exact, you can just coax it along and do the manipulation there. It'll work. All right. And then I went and did it the other way as well. And here you can see it's slightly out, so I'm giving it, it, it's slightly out like that. So I'm just pushing it so that it's meeting nicely in the center. And this will help you in the long run when you assemble. So when your, your ultimate piece should be, we started off by this. just to get it all moving nicely. And we're keeping this like this and we're gonna bring this in like that. Okay, so those two in like that, all the pieces will fold in like that. So now what you will end up with is this little triangle is going to be, should be on your right. And it might be that just to remember that it will help in the end. <laughs> because I had a few attempts at this, so your little extra triangle there is going to be on your right hand side. So we're going to bring in this piece, which was the six by 12, and which we scored in half. And we're going to have some glue, just use whatever glue you prefer. So take um, on this one, the bottom bit, which is folded. We're gonna add a bit of glue here. So this is the mechanism we're doing and then it'll all fall into place so once you do that. And you do need to hold it for like a little second or two, just so it doesn't, and then just press that in there. So then you see that this matches the width of that base piece there. So, so far we've got that. We've got that, we're flipping it. And then we're going to add some glue, making giving this a bit of a bend onto this side so it's the opposite and it'll stick onto the other side. So it's on the back. And I'll show you that. So we stuck this one down first I'll push that in there just giving that a bend right. and we flip it and that was on the outside there so now we've got a piece that's gonna open like that and when you open it hard it's going to do that if you are feeling like it's not working, just make sure that triangle is on your right and then it'll come good. So now to put this on the card. So you see how we got, if you do that, 
it won't open. So if that's the triangle's on the left, it won't open. So the triangle has to be on your right, that little one. All right, so I've got a card base. This is my uh, peach pie card base. And I'm going to use some of the Unbounded Beauty Designer Series paper, which is in all our in colors, of the, um, the new in colors. So when you, before you assemble, you need to, if you're putting any designer series paper on the inside, you need to do that prior to putting this section in. The outside doesn't matter. So I have got a square, square of 11.6 centimeters by 11.6. Um, I didn't add a hard top mat on the inside. If you wanted to, you could. And I've just gone with this unbounded beauty and kept it pretty um, simple on the inside in the sense of with the color. So whatever you normally do with the mat, you can, um, if you want a larger area, you can do that. Now, this paper is so pretty. And did I even show you the sample? No, I did not, so let me show it to you. I just said we're doing a card, you might still see it on the front, but like on the thing. But this is what it does. It. I completely forgot about that. But it's pretty cool. So I'm just doing another color. All right. right. So next thing we do is get a ruler or you can eyeball it and border on. No issues. We're gonna get the halfway map because we're going to assemble this. So the pen, pen not pencil block is gonna get covered. That's all I want. We're going to put the triangle on the right, the triangle on the right. So this guy's gonna be put up on that joint. And again, I'm just sure that it's open like that. I want it to open like that. Double check. and put the glue on that little one. So where we're working on that one side, which I keep harping about that triangle, because it is, it is destined to go wrong if we miss the triangle. Trust me, I know. Then I'll center it there. And this will just sit, make sure that's um, straight. Close that, press that. Then moment of truth, it opens up, right? And the, just bending it back and forth with the start helps it when it, you're opening it up. It, it, um, because this opens pretty much um, in the complete opposite way. Uh, I'm just, I was a bit anxious, not anxious. I was a bit um, impatient, I say. So I'm going to um, place that back up and make sure that glue is glued right down. You know, make sure he's stuck well and truly. Next to the other side, lift it a bit. 
curiosity. So, right, leave that there. So you can do that front in a minute. The next step is, I've got, is a piece of, I've kept this same colour, but you can change it. Uh, it's peach pie again. It's 10 by 7 centimetres. So just making sure that's stuck down. Just give it a good finish. That opens perfectly fine. And both sides are pretty much the same. Either side's fine. So this is going to sit right on here. And we want it. Or, or you can sit either side is fine. So whatever side you're sticking it on, you need to just keep it semi-closed. So I want it on this side, Either, both sides are the same. So if I want it on this side, I need to put my card this way and just lift it up a little. I just want to show you. And put some glue on this square. I normally don't put lots of glue, but just because this is holding that piece. Then you're going to center this. And the bottom of this is going to be flush with the bottom of the card. Um, you can see that it's a little bit. I'm trying not to move it too much. Okay, so then when I move push this this way, it's going to open up. And you can keep that more straight. Okay, so that'll fall flat like that. And as it opens up like that. So we can go and go ahead and now add our um, pieces onto this. I've got some summer splash and a bit of that DSP. I'm using the same DSP throughout the card. So this is for the inside. I'm just matting some layers. I love these colors. Do you love our ink colors this year? They're so pretty. I just, they're just together. They're nice and separately. They're so, they're so neat. I love them. Now, sometimes you have colors that just really are your colors. These are my colors. So that's that inside one for now. I will come back and. Um, do more because we can and I I'm just making sure I've got my stamp set ready. It'll be here. If not, we can. I've got the die ready, and we have got this and this. So this paper is has all our new ink colors. So I my recommendation is if you buy a pack of the designer series paper in the ink colors, get this as well because it gives you more opportunity to um, mix and match but better still 
if you get a starter kit, you're going to get all in color products. Um, the designer series, you're going to get card stuff, you're going to get the e pads, you're going to get stamping right back. The $144 worth of in color products, you'll get included in the starter kit. So that's um, $235 of product, which you can choose, plus the $144 of in color products for just $161. So great value. If you love your crafting supplies and if you love stamping up supplies, can you tell I'm a bit wonky here? There we are. Because I've just left myself a teeny mini margin here. Just a little one. All right. Let's begin. Now I've got some die cuts which I've done, but we're going to do some uh, colouring as well. Oh, blending. I love my blending. Let me get my stamp set. Here we are. With the flowers of beauty. I've used the dye and cut out um, one of these lovely dyes. Which uh, dark cuts, which I'm going to just use because the flowers are there already. I didn't want to put too much on it. And I will use the summer splash. To color this. Just go lightly because it is delicate. And um, as I say, while I bend the the pizza. I love this color. Maybe my favorite. It just it is a tough call because I'm pink girl, and I love my pinks. They're all nice. So I'm creating a bit of a darker tone down here. I'm going to bring in my other blue brush. That's some pretty peacock because I'm drawing on the paper which has a bit of pretty peacock. Just take the excess off. Blend it a bit darker at the bottom. Those colors go really well together. Very ocean, depths of the ocean. I have pre cut some flowers now these cut a um there's a die in that set which cuts a whole lot of these flowers at one time which is great but also pre-cut um from the um it's like a it's in the same set it's a, it's a mega suite so um you get two stamp sets two dies that so I have die cut that, and what's left is that little bit in, it comes like that. And I've also die cut that little label and embossed it with the eyelet 3D embossing folder, which we're going to use. And this is going to be for, our, for the inside. For the flower, because we've got this on the inside, I'm just thinking we may do. Mm -mm -mm. What color shall we do our flower? Maybe I'll go in. 
I'm going to stamp it in Cajun Taze and color it in each eye. Just to have a tone, something in the same tones. Um, it is a two step stamping stamp set. So you could even just stamp the second image. My, uh, I didn't put enough pressure on that. Maybe that needs a bit of, but that works fine for me right now for the purpose I need it for. Let's get some each eye stamping blends and maybe some a bit of calypso, a light calypso. Let's see how that goes. I'm gonna go with my light peach pie. So doing stamping that in Cajun Taze just gave it a bit of nice tone there. Instead of going black, sometimes black can be stuck. And I didn't want that for this. So I'm basically filling in this image. I'm not doing too much like crazy blending stuff like I normally do. Um, let's go in with some light calypso coral. Just tapping that in. And I'm gonna just bring in a bit here on the edges or the bottom of the petals and then I'll bring in the, the dark peach pie just blend that in and it's just a bit of extra color because flowers are not always just a color Bring back my light, and this time I'm going to go in with my um, bullet tip. And I like, see how it gives that nice dip in the center? So we can go ahead and die cut that. A bit of washi tape just to hold that together. And if you, of course, if you don't want to um, color it, there's a stamp that will just stamp that in the middle. So you can stamp it in peach by and you're fine to go. In. All right. Me and these things, I tell you what, I'm not. I would say I'm never any good at trying to adjust this, but it'll work. This is not that hard a one either. There we go. That's the one. <laughs> How many times did I turn that? Uh, all right. Let's. Um, this is the only bit of die cutting I'm going to do. So that's okay. You can do this in the mini. I've got my big one hand. You can do it in the mini. Right. Right, so we've got our little flower ready. That's for the inside. I would 
because the inside was more plain and I thought the flower went nice with the inside. Okay. So you got our bear. That's that. That looks nice there. He's going to go there. Let's see the inside first. For the sentiment, this is what I'm, I know that's not a complete piece and all that, but I'm going to camouflage it because if you put that there, it covers that funny looking thing there. <laughs> and I use the translucent florals, um, which is a one we had for a while. I just used the happy birthday from that. So, in sentiment, whatever works, it's in whatever you need it for the occasion. Um, congratulations, make a nice graduation card, a wedding card. It's something a bit special, isn't it? Having a fancy fold. I'm using tuxedo black to stamp the sentiment. And I will bump it a little bit to the left. And it's a bit, it's not a bit crooked, it, it's a bit more than a bit, but I can flip it. And I mess it up again. But I think that's not bad. It's possible, the better of the two. And what, um, and then if I put it in an angle, um, the cheese a bit, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be visible that much. So I'm just looking at what I've done. I'm going to glue this onto this, but first I need to um, pop this up on dimensionals. Okay, let's see whether it's visible the uh, inking. If it is, I'll read it. But sometimes you can see it. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. I will redo that. I've got enough scraps to do that. The black is showing through. Otherwise, we can salvage it, which is okay. All right, we've got another piece. Let's go again. I'm having a um, bit of a, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Sorry. I'll keep that there. Trim that there. And that would work fine. So I'll trim it down a bit. Now, I might just. In this, in this instance, because I've got a bit of space around, I can glue this directly on. Otherwise, if you were using that extra bit, which I was going to use, add it to the card first. I'm going to glue it and then trim around it in case I trim it too short. Add a little bit, oops, a little bit of glue. As I say, little, a lot came out. That's not too bad. Not too bad. And there's a little bit of extra 
space up the top. But... Just trimming around it. Which wouldn't have been required if I stamped straight to start with. Now you can see this little bit under the leaves, which a uh, bit of cardstock. Um, the flower will cover that up, we're hoping. Where is it? Like that. Ta da! And then I will glue in there. So he's a little bit. I'm just trying to camouflage that little white um, empty space there. Right, let's see how we go. This needs a bit of trimming there. I don't know if you stamp, you could have even stamped on the base if I wanted to. I just didn't want that because it was a busy base. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. If I do that on my book, it's okay. That's what I do to cover up my crooked feelings. <laughs> Good cuttings. Okay. I can even add some um, embellishments. So that's the front, um, back one, or inside that, I should say. And I left that white. If you wanted to, you could even add some coloring there. So that falls nicely inside. Next, we are going to add these little bits. Now, this one's going to be just stuck. Um, with dimensionals and then I will add a bit of glue on this. This embossing board I've used a fair bit already, the eyelet one. And stick it there. Then just dot, dot some glue. So there's a couple of ways. I just use to this. Just dot some glue here and there. You could also use like a sponge or just to put some glue on a silicon mat and pick up the glue with the sponge bar. You could do that. That's easier to manage. Now we'll stick that down. That's my little piece that I cut earlier. Now we've got all these little flowers which I've got here, which I die cut earlier, but if you if it's one pass, you just die cut them. So I'm just going to put one here. Get you take your big tool. And put it there. Just curling it as a boy. That's there. I didn't put any like in the center. I'm going to put some. 
around the color. You can. Um, it's okay. Some have seven and some haven't, so that's all. I'm not very fast with that. I'm going to put seven flowers onto the. I'm going to move that so it's not quite in the same place. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got just four. One more. I'm just curling it a bit. Seven. Curling the petals. And then I've got a butterfly. From the butterfly paper accent secret keeps in that little pack. It was in a uh, mini catalog. It was with the lavender sweet. Um, pick any of the butterflies. And what color do you reckon we should do it in? I might go in maybe with the just to throw it out there. I'm just wondering whether the best first or maybe even a nice Coral would be nice for the Cajun. The stamp Cajun, I've got the in here. And um, I actually um, used a stamping blend. So I'll use the same thing on my previous cut. I did use stamping blend. So I might go a darker color. And uh, just bring in that Cajun craze a bit here. And we can bring in um, even some calypso. Just going to use the same color on this. The feel is. Bring in my dark calypso coral. I was contemplating using very best, but I think that would have just been too much of the color. It would have been nice, but I haven't used it anywhere else. So that's what I decided against that. And like with coral. And I can close that. I don't need that. And then just go that. You can use uh, your blending brushes and inks for that as well for this as well. Either one will, will be fine. Just give you a different look. And sometimes it's nice to do different things, isn't it? Just And I am going to bring a bit more of that Cajun just to darken it up. All right, so now to just Just in there. I keep going to say endless. <laughs> uh, I think right there. We've got our uh, art pretty much done. Full oh, embellishments. I'm probably going to use this. These are shimmer gems. Uh, uh, any of these colors would be fine. Um, oops, stay there. All the little dots from the inside of the flowers have stuck. The flowers. is trying to move. Let's put a bit more glue there. We've got a bit of peachy colors going on. So maybe we can go with uh, 
the summer splash or we could yeah summer splash would be nice and to finish off we have tie a bow in this in peach pie The glue dot. Stick in right there. So that just as a drawing for the leaves, I guess, like a little bouquet. Let me know what you think, and I'll just bring back the original card so you can compare, do what you like, and then I'll show you like the measurements if you want to see that as well. So those are the two cards. Um, these are the measurements. I just did it on some old card stuff. Um, card base, but in a bit, which we scored a lot, which is that one so that's six by thirteen that's that bit and the smaller bit we attached is the six by twelve and the piece at the front. Um and here are our two cards. This is the original which was um, a sample and this is the one um called Peach Pie and Summer Splash, same DSP, same products. Um, leave me a comment if you like this, if you have tried it out. I'd love to hear from you. And um, thanks for stopping by and checking out these cards. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to see you back again uh, real soon. If you have not subscribed to my um, channel, please do so. Um, I do upload videos very regularly. So, um, if you would like some inspiration, please um, uh, subscribe and like this video as well. It, it helps me greatly. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Bye-bye.